Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Stalker. I'm a real estate agent here in Beverly Hills and I talk all things metaverse. Today we're going to discuss the original founder of Second Life coming back to Second Life to revamp, innovate, and put money into making it a bigger platform than it already is. First and foremost, I wanna give you some context if you don't already know. The metaverse is not a new phrase. It was first introduced in 1992 by the author Neil Stevenson in his book, Snow Crash. Now, after that concept was created, there was a metaverse or virtual reality world created called Second Life, which was founded by Philip Rosedale. Now, after creating Second Life, he later moved on to build a company called High Fidelity, which specialized in the development of virtual reality. And now after the metaverse hype, he has decided to put money back into Second Life to revamp it and give it a little bit of touch up and he will be doing so with the funding of his other company, High Fidelity. So they will be shifting seven people as of now to work on the innovation of Second Life. And the deal also includes two patents covering community moderation in decentralized environments. Now, just to be clear, Second Life is already a huge platform and it already does make a lot of money. He's just coming back to revamp it and to make it more mainstream and to also follow along with the innovation of technology. Now, most of the time when I talk about the metaverse to my friends or my family or whoever it is, and they ask the question, wasn't Second Life kind of the first company to really explore this concept? And they're correct. Second Life, they were the first company to kind of explore the concept of the metaverse with their creation of Second Life back in 2003. However, at the time, the technology wasn't really mature and virtual reality headsets weren't necessarily mainstream. But with that being said, the money that they're putting into revamping Second Life isn't going to go towards virtual reality headsets because the original founder, Philip, isn't really a huge fan of virtual reality headsets and he thinks that it's going to be another five years before we see any software that the mainstream user will use on a daily basis. So as of now, the money that he's putting into the innovation development will go towards tweaking social and economic aspects of the game, which he hopes will drive user growth. He's focused a lot on spatial audio and also more advanced avatar animations. And he'll be doing this by using facial tracking with cameras. He's really exploring the idea of using webcam recognition. So you're on your computer and your webcam sees you and it animates your avatar at the same time. He thinks this is something that not a lot of companies are focused on and it's something he spends a lot of time thinking about. He also is putting money towards the development of Second Life so that it's more compatible with the iPhone so that you don't have to go on your computer, which is a huge problem with a lot of metaverse platforms is that you can't use it on your phone. You have to use it on your computer, which stops a lot of people from using it because obviously you can't pull up your laptop when you're in, you know, the passenger seat of a car, or let's say you're at the beach. You don't always want to bring your huge laptop there. So now that he's making it more compatible with phones, it'll allow a broader scale of audience to be able to use it. Now, will they be incorporating NFTs in Second Life? And as you can see here in this article, it says, as for the possibility of incorporating new ideas, ideas like interoperable, non-fungible item in Second Life, Rosedale will need some convincing. In the metaverse, interoperable content is items that can be bought on one platform and carried over to another. He referenced the way branded content can negatively break the fourth wall in metaverse platforms, saying that in the short term, content interoperability is one of the things only a brand could love. However, he does agree that the long-term idea of NFTs are going to be a thing. They actually already sell over $700 million worth of items in Second Life every year. He says here, those are all NFTs. Basically the core idea of allowing digital assets to be marked and allowing them to be tradable and shareable. However, these items on Second Life aren't recorded on the blockchain, which is the core ingredient in NFTs. So I'm not sure moving forward how they're going to adapt that. Now, in conclusion, guys, I think it's really interesting that the original founder of Second Life is now coming back to Second Life and putting in his own money and revamping it and has visions for where he believes the world could go. I do disagree that he's not focusing on NFTs and he doesn't necessarily agree that exchanging the NFTs from one platform to another is something that should be a thing, which I disagree with that. However, I do agree about the virtual reality headsets and I think the technology isn't there yet for us all to sit and put the virtual reality headsets on. We haven't seen any technology that we can use on the daily that is small enough for us to carry around and doesn't give us a headache, doesn't make us nauseous. So the fact that he's not specializing in virtual reality headsets, I think is an interesting
interesting idea and he's putting money into other aspects of the metaverse that could make it more money. So I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you agree with him? Do you disagree? Did you ever play Second Life? Would you ever play it again? Let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, and you guys have a great day.